Okay, so we're in the second part of 1.3, and we don't have a whole lot left, so this should not be a very long video. Um, I've said that before and, uh, and made it longer than it had to be, kind of like I'm doing right now as I uh, talk too much. But nevertheless, what we want to do is we have these two special trig limits, and I want to show you how you can um, and how you'll need to be able to use them to answer questions like the following. So we have the limit as x approaches 0 of tan of x over x. First things first, again, I would start off with just trying the substitution method, right? Unless you just can see there a problem right from the beginning, I would start off by just plugging in 0 for x. Well, tan of 0 is 0, so we end up with the indeterminate form of our answer, which is 0 over 0. Now, so let's think about the methods that we have to handle indeterminate forms. Well, we had factoring, but that's not going to help us here. We had rationalizing, but that is not going to help us here. So since we're dealing with trigonom uh, with our with our trigonometry, then maybe we can rewrite this tan of x over x so that you can use one of these two trig formulas. Okay, these these special uh, trig limits. Maybe we can put these to use for us. So let's start. Well, how can I how could I rewrite this? Well, first let's start with the idea that both of our, I mean, just intuitively, both of our trig limits that we've been given deal with sines and cosines. So our first job, in my mind, is to rewrite our function in terms of sines and cosines, okay? So tangent of x is just equal to sine of x divided by cosine of x. Okay, so that's what the numerator could look like if you wanted it in terms of sines and cosines. The denominator, we'll, we'll leave it alone. Now, this doesn't allow us to do anything yet. If I take the limit, I would still get 0 over 0. But let me show you another way of thinking about this. So really what you have is a, a complex fraction. You just have a fraction divided by x. You could think about that as x over 1, which would be a fraction divided by a fraction. So there's no need to have this long um, uh, division bar. We can rewrite this as, well, sine of x divided by over cosine of x. And now, instead of having this long division bar, let's just use a division symbol. And the denominator would still be x, and I'm going to write that as x over 1. So we haven't done anything to help us yet. It's just we rewrote the problem just so we didn't have a fraction divided by a fraction. But now you know what to do. So if you're going to divide fractions, we got to flip. We have to multiply. So it is, it is important that you always flip um, what comes after the division symbol, right? Like 2 divided by 1 is different than 1 divided by 2. So just make sure you understand that when we, we're going to flip x over 1 and make it 1 over x. And now and by doing so, we can change division into multiplication. Okay, so... It's at this stage right here where I just need you to pay attention for just a second. Because what I'm going to do, I'll, what I'm going to do is, because we know that A times B is equal to B times A, right? We know that we can, uh, the multiplication has that commutative property to where I could switch them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my X over here and move my cosine of X over here. Now, maybe in just a second, you'll see the why behind that. But let me go ahead and do that right now. 
So now instead of having sine over cosine, I'm going to have sine of x over x. Instead of having 1 over x, I'm going to have times 1 over cosine of x. OK, so it's at this stage that I hope you see why we chose to do this. Because do we know what the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x is? Well, yes, we do. It's definitional, right? We know that that is equal to 1. So really what's happening here is you're, you're basically taking the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x times the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over cosine of x. Okay, this you don't need to do this step. You could skip from, uh, it, it just I wanted you to be able to see it for your notes. So what is the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x? Well, by definition, is equal to 1. So let's go ahead and turn this part right here is just equal to 1. So this is going to be 1 times. Well, now, what about, we don't, obviously this part, we're just going to use substitution, right? That, that does not fit any of these uh, special trig limits. So plugging 0 in for cosine, that's just times 1 over cosine of 0. And what is cosine of 0? Well, cosine of 0 is just 1. So this, in other words, all of this is just 1 times 1. I mean, that is your answer. The answer is 1. OK, so I'm going to erase a little bit of that in just a second, um, just to give me free up some space. But now I want you to take a look at the technique we're going to use here. So. We have the limit as x approaches 0, right? x is approaching 0, but we're taking the limit of sine of 4x over x as x approaches 0. OK, and now let's you and I, let's notice that that somewhat resembles our special trig limit for sine as x approaches 0, but not quite, right? In other words, if this 4 wasn't here, then we would be good to go. So let me show you the trick here. This is what's what we're going to do. So maybe if I mentioned I was going to erase, I, I hope that it's OK if I erase now. If it's not, then please feel free to pause. But let me go ahead and erase and so that I can give myself a little bit of space. And now, let me start with just a, a quick observation. You don't have to write this. Let's say this x represents your age. Will you agree with me that if I take your age and double it while at the same time cutting it in half, won't you agree with me that I have not changed x, right? So if you multiply by 2 and divide by 2 at the same time, well, then you're, this is a little bit of mathematical manipulation, but you haven't changed x. Now, this means something because what I want is I want a 4 here. So I want sine of 4x divided by 4x because sine of 4x divided by 4x is the same thing as sine of x divided by x when we're taking the limit as x approaches 0. Don't you agree with me that if I'm plugging 0, if you think about 0 in for x, 4 times 0 is 0, or plugging in 0 for x is still 0. So I'm, I'm not changing anything. Well, let me be more specific. Sine of 4x over 4x in the limit is going to match sine of x over x. Now, if you're like me, let me, let me, forgive me, let me write what I'm saying. 
Okay, you can put your pins down for a second. Because what I'm, the statement that I'm making is that in the limit, these are going, we're still going to be able to apply this special trigonometric limit. And if you don't believe me, uh, or maybe you think that's a little bit sloppy, and sometimes I do mix informal and informal language uh, too much, but what I could do is I could just say, well, let 4x, let's define 4x to be, I don't know, z. Then wherever I see a 4x, I can now write a z. So now I would have sine of z over z is equal to sine of x over x. And you can see that in this case, this very much resembles our special trig limit in, in the limit as x is approaching zero. So I can, either way, if you will allow me to, what I, I'm going to go back to my goal is I want to have a four here in the denominator. Okay, so let me, let me now erase this, and let me make that happen. So I got the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 4x. And here it is. I'm going to go ahead. I want, to, I want a 4 here. But do you agree with me that I can't, I can't just take your age and divide it by 4 without changing your age, right? So I can't just divide by 4 unless I'm also willing to multiply by 4 at the same time. Now you're starting to see how this is, hopefully, how this is going to work. So I can have a 4 in the denominator as long as I'm also willing to have a, in other words, I can divide by 4 as long as I'm also willing to multiply by 4 at the same time. Okay, so now let's see what's going to happen. So this multiplication of 4, I'm going to bring out in front of the limit because if you recall the theorem, the, uh, the limit of a constant is just a constant. So that ends up becoming 4 times the limit as x approaches 0 of well, what's left. What's left is sine of 4x over 4x. And now... We got it. So we're going to use our special trig limit. And we're simply going to write sine of 4x over the limit of sine of 4x over 4x is 1. So this ends up being 4 times what? 4 times 1 or 4. Okay. So this is a technique you want to either revisit or have some notes on because it's a technique that you're going to want to have, okay? So last one here, so just a more advanced version. And if you, I don't know, if you want to challenge, pause the video. See if you can figure this out. If you were, <clears throat> if you were in my class, I would give you a high five, even if it was in the air, over the air, right? High five. So this is just through the internet. High five. If you can do this on your own, hats off. So, but nevertheless, it's a little bit more advanced, but can you use these special trig limits to figure out this problem? So I'm going to do this for you in just a second. Feel free to pause the video if you'd like to try it on your own. Okay. So how do we do this? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of regrouping. So first, let me go ahead and understand that x, um, if I were multiplying the denominator times the denominator, let's just go ahead and note that that's x squared, right? So I'll go ahead and write that. So I won't, I won't change anything yet. This is just 12 times x times x is x squared. And let's go ahead and rewrite everything else because nothing else has changed yet. So sine squared of x over 1 plus cosine of x. Okay, so here's the part 
that you would have to you would have to think about a, a little bit harder. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to end up taking this sine squared and bringing it to this first fraction. And if you don't mind, hold off and I'll tell you the why behind this in just a second. But let me just, let me do that. So now I have 12 sine squared of x over x squared multiplied by, well, what's left in the numerator after I move that sign? Well, it would have to be a 1, right? It can't be 0. 1 over 1 plus cosine of x. And now let me try to explain why th you're on to something. Because watch how we can rewrite this. So let's just make sure we understand that obviously sine squared of x, that just is sine of x times sine of x, right? And obviously x squared, as we've already seen, is just x times x. So I could have left my x's alone, but here's what I'm going to do. Let's, let me write it and let's see if you agree with me. So I got the limit, x going to 0. And let me rewrite this part here. So I'm going to re re rewrite that as 12 times sine of x over x times sine of x over x. Let's see if you, before I go any farther, let's see if you agree with me. Well, let's just redistribute. So that would be over 1. So let's start with the, the numerators. 12 times sine times sine. Isn't that 12 sine squared? Now that the denominator is 1 times x times x, isn't that just x squared? Okay. So I'm not going to do anything to this 1 over 1 plus cosine. I'm going to leave that alone. But now do you see that you can apply the, these limit definitions to each one of these, right? What is the limit of sine of, sine of x over x as x goes to 0? Well, it's just 1. So this should be, at this stage, this should end up being 12 times well, what's the limit of that? So that's 12 times 1. What about, what about uh, sine of x over x again? Well, in the limit, as x goes to 0, again, that's times 1. And what about as x goes to 0 of 1 over, of 1, over 1 plus cosine of x? Well, we see that that is equal. Well, actually, we don't have a t my, my mistake. We don't actually have a trig. Uh, a trigonometric limit for that, do we? So then in that case, we're going to go back to plugging it in. So this would end up being times 1 over 1 plus cosine of 0. All right, let's just do our math. So this is 12 times 1 times 1 times, well, 1 over, what is cosine of 0? Cosine of 0 is 1, so that's 1 over 1 plus 1, meaning 1 over 2. Well, 12 times 1 times 1 times a half is 6. Okay, so that will conclude 1.3. I'll see you in the next video.